Well, you know what? I'll just do it. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. I don't know if that works. Um, I'm Daphne Hawks, and I'm an Episcopal priest. I'm retired. I'm a grandmother of six children, and grandchildren, and four um, children who produce the six grandchildren. Um, I have. Um, let's see. I was married for 25 years. My husband was a surgeon and died in a plane crash in 1985. Um, I brought, I had four teenagers at the time, so we continued to uh, live in the same place. And um, when he, when my husband died, there was no um, question, of course, about the fact that I was his spouse, and we had, I inherited everything that we owned together. Um, legally it said I was et ox, you know, in Latin means end wife, but we, there was no problem, 25 years, and uh, uh, financially, or legally, or emotionally, except for a great deal of grief. Um, and 10, 15 years later, well, in between that, I, I uh, was a chaplain and an ethics teacher in a, um, I had been in different parishes in New Jersey, but I went up to Massachusetts when my youngest son went to college and was a uh, chaplain and taught ethics at a uh, Episcopal boarding school. And I found that so many of my students who, not, okay, that's not right, I'll rephrase that. A number of my students who were depressed and two or three who had made um, attempt, suicide attempts would come to me and tell me that it was about their sexual orientation. And that really, really hit me because I have four kids. And um, then 15 years after my husband died, I fell in love with a woman. And we, she was a doctor also. and. Uh, had been married, and we decided to live together. My kids, who were more in their 30s by then, loved her very much, thought she was wonderful. Uh, neither of us wanted to be married to each other. She had been married. Um, and um, two years after, three years actually, after we became partners, we had a um, domestic um, partnership um, done in New Jersey or you know legally and about four months later she was diagnosed with stage four cancer um, I'm eight years older than she was we were a little bit or close in age but she was younger so I never thought something like that would happen um, in the time between uh, my husband's death, and say five years or so later, my first child was married and I did the wedding. And it was great joy. They have three children now. Uh, second child was married and I did that wedding as an Episcopal priest. And they have two children. And the third child uh, is not married. Uh, the fourth child was married and has a, a small little boy now. And uh, they all really loved my partner. So they were very horrified uh, when she, they realized she had cancer. She was pretty much, she was a um, psychiatrist, uh, lecturer, um, Jungian analyst, and taught around the world. And she also was, had been at Rutgers for a long, long time and had a pension from Rutgers. And uh, after she died, I'll do it very fast, after she died, um, we found that 22 years before she had written a statement at, for a beneficiary, but it was ERISA, is that the title, the word, the funds? So I, my lawyer, who was settling the state, assumed that I was the legal beneficiary of that because we were domestic partners, which, as you know, wasn't the case, and I wasn't. So I, for me personally, it's not about whether, I think that made me angry, it made me very sad, for all the other people who have had to live that way. But I saw, I've seen such a difference. I mean, you've known, when you've known two different relationships. My children all spoke at her funeral. All their kids came, all her nephews and nieces and everything. And it was just 
absolutely as much a marriage or a relationship as I had had for 25 years with my husband. But anyhow, just to finish and say one thing, I'm really speaking not because it wasn't um, a huge catastrophe for me at my age or financially, but I do think, I think I want to say something just because I've known the two different um, states of being, being married and being in a domestic partnership. And I think of all those kids that I knew, including a nephew of mine who was gay and killed himself. Uh, all the young people who have, who will, all, who will never know that equality, and I, I think it's a great injustice. I was the first woman ordained in the Episcopal Church, so I think I, and I was involved in several rights for that. I think this is a good example, once again, of um, prejudice and fear uh, keeping people from equality. Thank you. Thank you.